Miss Blonde, we were expecting you. Where is Iggy? Hey, we were expecting you. Hi, investigators. Welcome to Spy Curious. We the weekly program where as investigators we get together and we talk about exciting stuff like taking statements and writing reports. Yes, we are the Australian weekly corporate, private and government investigation news program that is making statements great again. Isn't that just brilliant? It can't get any more exciting than that. Every Friday, spending 30 minutes watching this program. So. Good day, Renee. That coffee mug's coming. <laughs> thanks, thanks for saying good day. Good to see you again. So we've got an action-packed program today, full of all sorts of exciting stuff. And the first exciting stuff we've got to get through is a little hint for you. When you're looking for government investigation jobs, you've got your certificate for in government investigation, and you're trawling through the internet and going on Seek, and you type in government investigator. If you type in investigator roles, you'll only get about three, okay? Because not all of the government departments call their investigators investigators. They're inspectors, they're um, compliance officers. There's a whole range of different things that they call them. So I just want to show you a brief little movie and it's got a little hint on what to do when you're searching for investigation roles. So when you search for investigation roles on SEEK or in government program um, websites, you type in investigator, as I just did there, and you'll see that there are three jobs. So that's no good to anybody. There's only three vacancies, and this is on a Victorian website. You need more jobs to select from that. So what you do is you go back to your search and you type in compliance, then hit search. By using the word compliance, you're getting all the regulatory compliance role positions. So in doing that, you've got more jobs to choose from and a, a wider range of things to do. G'day, George. Uh, thanks for getting in contact from the lockdown, mate. Great to see you. Hope your footy team wins this weekend, mate. G'day, James. Great to see you, buddy. Always good to see you. You behave yourself today. I don't want any rude comments. And uh, good day. <laughs> so as you can see, all the way through there, we have those employment vacancies for regulatory compliance. So type in the word in Seek or other search engines, compliance, and all these great jobs will come up. There's even one coming up in a minute, a really exciting one, or is it finished? Here it comes. It's coming. Nearly there, there's a team leader role in Victoria, but you've typed in compliance and you want a different type of job that's a really good one to have in Victoria. G'day, Matt. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> there's a fire prevention role and there's a compliance enforcement role there as a manager. You're going to need a um, 165 grand a year. Wow, <laughs> building assessor role, building inspectors at the VBA. Hi, George, at the VBA. And there's a sheriff's officer position vacant for your expressions of interest. So there's a little tip. Usually um, search for compliance rather than just investigator and it'll open up more for you. Now, I had to tell you, say I told you so, but this has happened this week and it's come up. And this is my chance, as Mike Evans, of 20 years experience of being um, an investigation instructor at the Australian Security Academy, here's my I told you so moment. In the Australian Security Academy Certificate 3 in Investigative Services and Certificate 4 in Government Investigation and other units, we have glossaries. Um, so you can see definitions of certain words or expansions on um, topics um, that relate to that qualification and that are relevant. One of the ones that we have, you can see over here on the left hand side, is common driving hazards encountered by investigators. Now, this is just a little thing you can click on and this one says it's about children playing and it's got a sign in its picture, but there's a whole glossary of these things uh, when you click more. So as you can see up the top here, it says uh, driving hazards encountered by investigators and you can scroll down and you can see uh, bushfire and smoke or 
cattle on the road, um, detours, dingoes, if you've ever been in the outback, dingoes, they're, they're prolific around some of the townships. Dogs on the road, um, driver fatigue, they're just some of the things. But one of the ones I want to draw your attention to, and everybody's laughed at me for 20 years because I've got it in there. If we click on the M in our um, index here and have a look at the driving hazard under M, it's mouse plague. Now people said to me, that'll never happen, it doesn't happen. I've been in a driving situation driving through a mouse plague and it's quite a different experience. Mice, you're travelling along at 50 kilometres an hour and mice are entering your vehicle underneath and they're running up your leg and they're going down into your shirt and they're coming out your shirt sleeve and literally dozens of them are picked up by your vehicle and driving along with you. So just a little bit of an insight there into a common driving hazard that might only happen every 50 years but it's something you could be caught in and people in outback Queensland and New South Wales are caught in right at this very moment. That's my I told you so moment because people have questioned me on that as a driving hazard. And if you ever get caught in one, don't stop. Just keep going because your car will fill up with mice. So <laughs> keep driving. Um, Kelly has asked a question. And Kelly's written to me, said, hi, I'm a big fan of your page. <laughs> well, brown nosing will get everywhere, Kelly. Unfortunately, I volunteer on Friday afternoons and have to watch live casts after the fact and miss them if they're not in my feed. Well, that's easy. Stop, stop volunteering and just watch the live feed, Kelly. That's the solution there. All right. She says, all right, do you provide videos um, other than Facebook so I can uh, see them later on, watch them later on? I work in the workers' compensation space and always looking for ways to hone my skills and get really good hints and tips like mouse plagues and um, uh, search engines, that sort of thing. Good on you, Kelly. Thanks for writing in. Very good of you. If... You, this doesn't show up in your feed, the best thing to do to guarantee it shows up in your feed is make a comment or hit like, and it will show up in your feed quite regularly. But the other thing you can do is pop over to YouTube, and the channel is called Michael Evans. And this channel, if you look down to the bottom, on the bottom right there, it says it's had 120,115 views from people seeking information about private investigators. But that's where all the replays of Spy Curious on Friday afternoon appear later on. So it's on the YouTube channel. You don't have to watch them live. It does appear there live, but you can watch it there Friday night at 7pm. You can watch it there Saturday morning at 9.30. Or if your footy team's losing on Sunday afternoon, you can watch it on Sunday afternoon. You don't have to watch your football team losing. So that's where you can go and watch the replays. Great question. Thank you, Kelly. Um, in the news this week, this is a beauty. So a man has been fined for fraud in Victoria and he has to repay the money. So Mandeep's got himself into trouble and you can uh, research that. The, the flashing light there was on the LinkedIn website for WorkSafe and the rest of the story is on that link on LinkedIn at WorkSafe. So you're going to read all about Mandeep's problems he's got with his fines and uh, working while he was claiming benefits. So that's happened this week and it's been a pretty regular occurrence in the last couple of weeks. There's another one that came a few weeks ago and this one was only last week. So WorkSafe in Victoria are kicking some goals and stopping people from committing some fraud around the place. So good on you, WorkSafe. You're doing a great job. That, that's great to see. You and YouTube, great to good. That's good brown nosing, George. I reckon that's worth a coffee mug, mate. Great, great to see. <laughs> okay, people, now, now back to reality. <laughs> um, this one I found interesting. It was in the news this week in America. Um, this guy from Virginia, he single-handedly lifted an overturned car to free a trapped woman who had an accident. Now, as a licensed private investigator, you're going to go out and interview people that do things like that. And you'll be surprised just how much it does happen. Someone has an accident. I had one once where two guys saw a one-ton weight fall on top of another guy's head. 
He fell over underneath it and then it landed right on top of him. So that was a, a pretty big accident. And they saw this weight and they just lifted it off him and pulled him out. The police came around with the emergency services and all that sort of thing because they heard it on the radio and the fire brigade and the ambulance, they all attended. And they asked the two people what happened and the, the victim's been carried away. And they said, oh, he slipped over and fell under there and the weight lowered down on top of his head. And then we lifted it off and blood went everywhere and rada, rada, rada. So basically the cops said to them, show us how you did it. And they said, yeah, no problem. So they went over to lift it and they couldn't move it. So you will get those. It's quite interesting. As a private investigator, when you go and talk to people that were at the scene, who saw that sort of thing happen, the adrenaline at the time um, just brings out a little bit of extra strength. You've heard the rumours? Well, it's true. So it can actually happen. So I thought that one was quite um, newsworthy. <laughs> he was a very strong man, actually. He was a, um, the guy was actually a, a scrap metal merchant. And the two people that um, saw him injured they went to the hospital to visit him the next day and he checked himself out and he lived at Toowoomba and the accident happened on the Gold Coast. So they drove up to Toowoomba and when they got up there, he was standing on top of um, uh, some truck brakes with a sledgehammer and a bandage around his head trying to smash the truck brakes. <laughs> yes, he was a very tough man, James. Very <laughs> good observation. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so this one's really important. We're going to be doing in the future um, continuous professional development points as part of our training program for the, our Australian Security um, Academy graduates who are a member of AirLab. So with that, we're going to be doing a whole range of different things. So one of the things I've been introducing you to over the last 63 episodes is pop culture terminology and how it works, because you've got to get used to this sort of stuff, particularly if you're going to be a fraud investigator. I want to introduce you to a concept. The concept is I'm going to show you some CPD and you can answer a question on it in the future. We won't do that part today, but I'm just warming it up. <clears throat> you'll answer a question on it and you'll get your two CPD points. And that will be happening right here on Friday afternoons. So this is the movie, right? It's called Broken Arrow. It's got um, Christian Travolta and John Slater in it. And um, this is a little excerpt from the movie. And the, one of the actors says, a broken what? The other one says, broken arrow. It's a class four strategic theater emergency. It's just what we call it when we lose a nuclear weapon. And the other guy goes, I don't know. What's scarier, losing nuclear weapons or that happens so often they actually have a term for it. So they have terms that they use. And I've just spoken to you about that with pop culture. Now, one of the terms you're going to come across regularly in fraud control is this one. <laughs> so just because you're interviewing someone about the matter that's happening of corruption in a government department. It could be health, it could be education, it could be grooming of children, it could be anything, who knows. But the people doing it and the people um, enabling it, they call it the joke. Now, James Max never heard that term. He doesn't know what that means. That's why I'm doing this, so I can help educate him. But that's what they call it. Now, just because someone refers to it as the joke, it doesn't mean they're in on it. It's just that's their terminology that they use. So when they say about the joke, you've got to clarify with them, what is the joke? Oh, it's where we um, accept bribes from um, liquor licensing people would open an extra half an hour or whatever it is. You don't know. It could be anything. But keep in mind, it's the terminology that you are not going to be familiar with as an honest law-abiding citizen that you must clarify. We won't go back into that. It's just I can't operate. <laughs> All right. Um, coming out this week, we had the AIPI newsletter. And uh, there it is. It was issued this week. It's a three-page newsletter. It's got a whole lot of information uh, for investigators who are a member of the um, industry association, the AIPI. And Jody, who is the 
basically the manager of the AITI and coordinator. She's written a really great article there about licensing in each state, where you go for licensing and some of the rules and regulations. She's put a lot of effort into it. Um, so she's told she's done a research and she's telling you all about it. So all that's in the AIPI and Jody's worked very hard for information there for her members. And, you know, I guess that if they're people who have joined the association in anticipation of becoming an investigator in the future, that's good. And there's the Australian Security Academy's advertisement in there. So it tells you all about uh, Spy Curious every Friday afternoon. You can't miss it. And there's a link to it on the bottom. And um, AIPI tell you all about who their new members are. And they're all listed there as uh, new members as you go through it. So really informative little um, uh, newsletter. They talk about their conference that they had recently and they're really robust in talking about it. That's it's, it's very admirable to see. And they put an extra photo of me in there for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, boy. So that's the AIPI newsletter came out this week. Now, this is really, really important. A lot of people think that it's going to be too hard to get a job as a licensed private investigator. One of the hardest asks. Sorry, that wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> He stood in front of a conference I had once and he specialised in single motor vehicle accidents. That means there's going to be a bunch of six kids in a car, it's going to be rolled over, there's going to be a whole heap of people injured, they've all been drinking, they've all been doing the wrong thing and he specialises in getting the information through the statements from the witnesses who are in the car about what happened in relation to that accident. And it's a very difficult job to do because they're all going to lie to you, right? Because <laughs> they're all in big trouble. And they're taking dad's car or mum's car the wrong way and whatever. So he said to everybody at that conference, don't think you can't do it because you can. And Ted, I must say, mate, that was one of the most prophetic words I ever heard in a conference. Well done, Ted Hayes. So that's what he said to people. And I hear people and I see them saying, oh, I'm inexperienced. I can't get work. Nobody wants inexperienced people. Well, fair enough, you wouldn't go and have brain surgery from an inexperienced surgeon. I understand that. And that's not really going to happen. But you are going to be given certain types of jobs and you're going to be given inductions and you're going to be given help. So when you apply for work, apply confidently. Don't think you can't do it. Don't let your thoughts about inexperience hold you back. I mean, think about that in terms of other things you've done in your life. What if you said you're inexperienced? You'd just be an embarrassment. Okay, so this is a typical situation. Dr. Louise, our psychologist, is going to assist PIs with employment fright issues. So in this, we're going to have a scenario that's an analogy. And Freddie is a virgin. He lives with his mum and his cat, which is not a good start. Lucy, who Freddie met on Bookface, wants to take their relationship to the next level while her parents are away at the long weekend church conference. Bloody kids. Freddie's self-talk is negative. I am shy. I have no experience. What if I go wrong? I'm not worthy. I need Viagra. It's time to stop making excuses, Freddie. The time has arrived to man up. What would a psychologist advise frightened Freddie to do in this dire dilemma? As an Australian Security Academy student, you have experience. You've conducted records of interview in your course. You have written three factual investigation reports in your course, Workers' Comp, CTP, Liability and Public Liability. You've located subjects. You have planned four different investigations. You know your licensing acts and regulations and you know what general insurance is. You've um, conducted field observations and you've written three investigation reports. All of that was in your Australian Security Academy course over 550 hours. You are now a member of an industry association. So all of that adds up to meaning that you are a highly experienced professional investigator with more experience than anyone that's done a Centrelink 40 hour course in Queensland. You are way ahead of the pack as an Australian Security Academy graduate. You have experience in investigations and it's very important you emphasize that 
when you apply for work as a licensed private investigator in Australia. You hammer home that experience. You've taken statements. So how much more experience do you have to have? You've written reports. It was in your course. You had to. You couldn't have been marked competent if you didn't. Now, yes, there are people that will pass courses that are funded by the government. They study for 40 hours. They won't know a statement from a report. They won't know public liability from workers' compensation. They won't even get an interview. You will. You've done the right course. You've had Pat Flynn as your instructor assessor. You've had a course designed by 120 people. Be confident when you apply. One person knocks you back, you keep going. And you keep going, just like Jamie said, he's not giving up, he's still trying. And he's, someone's gonna give Jamie a chance and that's gonna happen sooner rather than later because Jamie's determined. But I wasn't talking about Jamie with that, I'm talking about a whole lot of people who are saying that to me over time. So people, if you're an emerging investigator, approach um, employers confidently when you're looking for work. Never post on Facebook, I'm a new investigator, I'll work for you for free. What you were saying to all the creeps out there and there are creep private investigators, come and get me creeps. Um, yeah, I'll jump in the back of your surveillance vehicle with you. Um, that's, you know, don't ever do that. So yeah, <laughs> great guy, Pat. My word, Pat's watching from Toowoomba right now, George, and he's not in lockdown, but he's a little bit colder than he usually is because a bit chilly up there. <laughs> All right, so be confident. And we had a conference earlier this year, and one of the instructors said in that, just walk in with your resume and keep walking through, right? Act like you own the place, just like you went into pubs when you were under 18. So um, keep trying, keep going. You're, you had experience in your Australian Security Academy course and employers respect that. One of the other things that's come out this week, there are people saying out there um, that they can um, get recognition prior learning based on the fact that they wore a uniform for Certificate 3 and Investigative Services. No, that's not going to happen. I'll play the video about that a little bit later. But there's a brand new segment, people. This is a beauty. Really enjoyed this one. We've had movie of the week. We've had TV show of the week. We've had TV series of the week. And now we've got private investigator book of the month. It doesn't get more exciting than this. This week, I'm reviewing Extreme Privacy, the third edition by Michael Bazell. He has helped hundreds of celebrities, billionaires, and everyday citizens completely disappear from view. Now you can buy this book online in Australian for $47.50 and you get a 650 page hardback copy. And Michael goes through it in a proactive manner, showing you how to completely disappear from the internet. What a load of rubbish. It says here, all you gotta do is do this and that and then you disappear. It works. That is really amazing. I have now completely disappeared. If you'd like to reappear, you can buy Michael's hardback copy of his book off the internet. It's $7,000. I recommend it to everyone. What a great idea. Extreme privacy. What it takes to disappear, third edition by Michael Bazell. Order it this week. You won't regret it. Um. If you'd like to take legal action um, because I said your book's a load of rubbish, here's my contact details. So if you need um, advice or guidance on um, investigative services, fraud control, security risk analysis, 2A licensing in New South Wales, or getting a private investigator license anywhere in Australia, there you are, get in contact with me. When this show finishes, I'll be on the phone till 6.30 tonight. So I'm very hard to get, but they're my numbers. If you can't remember those numbers and you haven't got time to write them down, Go over here later on and you can replay this um, program and get those numbers. So 
don't don't be a stranger people that's where you can see it now we have got lots of jobs in Australian private investigator and corporate government investigator jobs on our Facebook page. That's where you go and find 30% um, of the available investigation, corporate, government and um, <laughs> whatever else jobs, <laughs> private investigator jobs throughout Australia. Um, there's some really great jobs there. Don't, don't miss out on it. Quantum Corp are looking for investigators. Sure fact are looking for investigators, New South Wales and in Victoria. So, you know, please um, jump on that site. Um, <laughs> not giving up, mate. <laughs> we'll talk later, mate. <laughs> so, Sure fact are looking for investigators. Great team at Sure Fact. MA investigations are looking for factual investigators. All these people are looking for factual investigators. Um, Brookside are looking for factual investigators. G'day, Ryan. Um, everybody down at Brookside, they're looking for factual investigators down there. Um, so get in touch with them. If you're inexperienced, these are the people who will help you to grow into the industry. You've done general insurance investigations in your course, your CTP liability, motor vehicle accident. So get in touch with them and um, apply for those jobs. There's some great jobs going out there in investigations at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you, you wouldn't take that, Renee. You'll keep applying. And remember what Alex said, you're just walking with your resume. Keep on walking through. Remember that afternoon where we spoke about this. Uh, yes, it is a very nice piano in the background there. I'll play a few tunes on that one day for you, Matt. Okay. <laughs> All right, people. So, um, Get on that Facebook page and see what vacancies have come up this week. I've been too busy to collate them. I did show you a whole bunch of Victorian vacancies earlier on in that first video. But LKA are looking for investigators as well, general insurance investigators. If you don't know what general insurance investigation is, it's your home arsons, home burglaries, motor vehicle accidents, stolen motor vehicles, that sort of thing. Why don't the police do the arsons? Well, they do. Yeah, but they don't quantify the amount lost because... That's not a police issue. The police well, are looking at who started the fire. We're looking at what the loss was in general insurance. Um, so do that. Um, done all that, done all that. My 30 minutes is almost up. I just got to check I've done. Yeah. Oh, this so one. Here's a job on SEEK for AHC Investigations in New South Wales. They're looking for a factual investigator. Now, AHC do investigations in relation to personal injury, intellectual property, product and public liability, CTP liability, motor vehicle accident, and fraud investigations. So they want multiple factual investigators in Sydney and regional areas of New South Wales to join their team. You'll be required to interview appropriate people, uh, collect and relevant evidence, produce detailed, accurate reports in timely manner and ensure effective and appropriate communications with head office. So they're interested in hearing from people uh, who are seeking employment on a part-time or a full-time basis. So this is on Seek. So what you do is you hit the um, button up the top on the right-hand side that says apply for this job. And that brings up a page and you can see that Seek is pre-populated with my email address, with my phone number, and I can upload my resume. I'm self-employed, I don't have a resume. Um, and I can write a cover letter and it's pre-populated a little um, cover letter in there for me that obviously they've um, taken from my website or something like that or a previous application. So. Seek have got all that there for you to apply for that job. It's a, a probably a four button with an upload of a resume application process. So get in. So there's some of the jobs that are available. Excuse me while I have my drink for my private investigator mug that George is begging for and James what? Oh, I won't sleep tonight now. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. So um, I've just got to show you this one about recognition of prior learning for um, the Certificate 3 in Investigative Services. I mentioned it earlier. <laughs> Yours is coming, Renee. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten you. 
<laughs> I mentioned it earlier. It's about recognition of prior learning for Certificate 3 in Investigative Services 30619. Now, it's absolutely changed from when it was 30607. So if you wore a uniform, you can't get recognition of prior learning anymore. Hi, I'm Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy and after 13 years without having a red wine, I decided to have a glass of red with my dinner last night. So I got my bottle opener and I stuck it in the top of the bottle of red wine and I tried to open it, but it wouldn't open. Then I realised <laughs> they changed it. It didn't have a cork in it like it used to. There was like a tin bottle top. In 2020, there's no more corks. It's all changed. So things change. Then I decided I'd go down to my garage to cheer myself up and change the oil in my surveillance motor vehicle. I opened up the vehicle in order to change the oil. I looked inside the engine bay and there was no engine there. They've changed it. Vehicles don't have engines anymore. Well, to cheer myself up, I decided to go online and buy myself a Roger Moore safari suit. But it's expired. They don't have those in 2020 anymore. So I decided to go online and see if I could study a CPP 30619 investigation course. And I looked online and it said if you're in the military or emergency services, you could RPL that qualification. Well, you can't. So, in 2020, if you're a police officer, emergency services officer, or in the military, you cannot RPL CPP 30619 unless you undertook insurance or financial crime or code of conduct factual and or surveillance investigations. The qualification has changed, just like my red wine, just like my car engine, just like the safari suit. These things have changed and now you must be able to demonstrate for RPL that you've done insurance investigation, financial crime investigation or code of conduct factual and or surveillance investigations to RPL CPP 30619. I'm Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy. So you can't do that anymore. So it's all about civil investigation now. Pause for effect and a drink of water. Now, um, people, that's my 30 minutes. My time is up. We've had book of the week. We've had fraud terms you've got to understand, the joke. We've had the AIPI newsletter. We've had what to do about no experience. We've had how to search for investigation roles within government with your certificate for in government investigation. If you missed anything there and you want to see it again, go over here and have a look at this YouTube page. It's called Michael Evans. <laughs> So have a look at that page or just search in YouTube for Australian Private Investigator and that will come up in droves. There's over 500 videos on there that you can get lost in if your footy team's losing and 120,000 people have watched videos on that site. That's freaking amazing. That really is weird. And this week we've also seen a guy lift a, a heavy load. Where Kelly's had a question about where we can watch the replay. We saw Mandeep get himself into all sorts of strife and that's it Thank you, Miss Blonde. We expected you, and we will expect you again next week at Spy Curious.
Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching, everybody in Victoria. You're taking it with a great sense of humour. Good on you. It's going to be seven days. It goes really quickly. By the time I'm back next week, you'll be out running around watching the footy. See you then, everybody. Um, I'm Mike Evans. Uh, we'll see you next week.